Before we get into this video, I would like to thank my patrons, Harpy, Corporal Hot Pockets, and Salvatore Di Pietro. The three of you make this channel possible, and you guys are awesome. Hey, if you are watching this before November 25th, that means you are a patron. If you are not, you are probably not a patron, and that's okay. You, you don't have to be a patron. I, I just want to clarify that. I am working on a series of lore videos called Lore Shorts, and they are more or less lore videos that patrons get to watch a week early. Patrons are awesome, not just because they give me money, but because they're genuinely some really neat and cool people that I love talking to. So I do my best to give them the stuff they want, be it merch, early content, a look at artwork I'm working on for some projects, or something else. I, you know, overall, I do my best to ensure that the Patreon is always improving. I also intend to begin a series where I sit down one evening with the patrons and choose some close friends to come in as well and tell them some weird stories from around the world and afterwards we break down whether or not that story actually happened as it is commonly told. The first two episodes have already been recorded. They're about Flight 19's strange disappearance and unsinkable Sam, history's luckiest cat that may or may not have existed. Every episode after this will have the patrons in them. Super fun time. Anywho, the Charon. The UNSC's weirdest frigate by far, and also kind of the coolest. So on one hand, in terms of how it can be used, it's, it's incredible, specifically when it comes to the deployment of marines, fire support, and overall just contesting the aerospace. It boasts the largest carrying capacity of any frigate, period, and you can see this in action during Halo 3 with the Forward Unto Dawn. And the Charon itself was a pretty solid ship, to the point that it is still used by the UNSC Navy to this day in 2560. But there is one aspect to it that is absolutely uh, ludicrous to me. It has 50 M58 Archer missile pods as a light frigate. So now the first thing you're going to say is, so what does that mean? Well, the Paris class heavy frigate has half that number, and scaling upwards, the Valiant class super heavy cruiser also has 50 M58 Archer missile pods, meaning a light frigate has the same amount of firepower in terms of Archer pods as a capital ship many times its dunnage. That's, that's, uh, <clears throat> no, <clears throat> excuse me. Anywho, so this, this makes no sense. The Valiant class at 1.5 kilometers and 17 million tons has the same amount of missile pods as the Charon, a light frigate that is 490 meters in length and only six tenths of one million tons. They are this. They, they, the pods have the same type of missile too. Both are M58s. So how how do we fix this issue? Well, the lore kind of has an out here. Just because they have the same number of pods doesn't mean each pod is the same size or that they carry the same amount of Archer missiles. So you could have an instance where 10 of that Charon's missile pods is equivalent to one of the Valiant's missile pods. But for the Charon, that is still not enough to have it make sense. 50 tiny Archer missile pods is just not efficient at all. You have to remember that each individual pod is a module. That module has to be rearmed, maintained, repaired, powered, monitored, etc. So having less pods with a larger amount of missiles per pod works because that makes them easier to manage. It also helps with power distribution. The UNSC regularly push their reactors to the limits and forcing a tiny ship to manage the Mac, 50 pods, and other weapons alongside the hangars, life support, and many, 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 many other things. It, it's just not efficient at all. There's also the factor of how well a Charon's crew can do in combat having to manage 50 anti-ship modules. Even as late as 2552, there were many UNSC ships without similar AIs, so that means that manual operation for a Charon's bridge crew is nightmarish. Bear in mind, these ships do not have large crews, and think about how often shipyards, stations, and cradles would probably groan with fury about how tedious the maintenance, repair, and rearming of all 50 modules would be. The UNSC capital ships need to have specialized requirements meant to facilitate the care for both themselves and their modules. For the Charon, a life frigate, you'd have to give the modules, the treatment you give ships well above its tonnage. Not because its ammunition requirements are just as high or because the ship is big, but because it just has so many different modules to take care of. And for a ship of its size, 
that can be a problem. We're talking about a ship that would have to get in and out of the action quickly as it makes up a core part of the UNSC's fleet in a fire support role. It needs to be fitted for that quick acting supporting role. Now, here comes the big question. Why does the Charon have so many Archerpods? Well, the simple answer is that it is older lore. Older lore that just never got fixed, which is, well, a bummer given how much love was put into the recent encyclopedia release. I feel like such a glaringly problematic number should not have gone unnoticed considering how many people were likely reviewing that book, but eh. Then again, this is not exactly an area of lore that people are supposed to think too heavily about. At the end of the day, practical or not, canonically, the Charon is a good ship, and it will continue to hold its own even when compared to more modern stridents, molesands, and anlaces. In fact, it may even stand in stark contrast to them. The strident and molesand are next generation offensive tools. <clears throat> excuse me, offensive tools. They are purely for anti-ship combat. The Anlace is not exactly designed for combat, it is meant for electronic warfare, so with that in mind, that kind of leaves the Charon as the old workhorse that continues to put in work. Caring troops and supporting planetary campaigns were needed. It still does have a role, um, but yeah, that said, that's, that's my ramble. That's a little short. I will see you in the cosmos, friends.